In my demo today, I'd like to show you how you can link animal telemetry data to the exact same EMU data that Flora was using. Animal telemetry data are generated when animals are tagged with electronic devices, which track that animal's movements. Recent advancements in the accuracy and miniaturization of these ta tagging technologies has really led to a wealth of data for monitoring animal locations and monitoring animal behaviors. In fact, we see here just a sample off of the west coast of the US. These are data that um, I gleaned from NOAA's Animal Telemetry Network DAC, a very rich source uh, for animal telemetry data freely available. <clears throat> Um, according to NOAA, these data provide a critical new insight into the behavior and habitat preferences of highly migratory pelagic marine species. And that's what we'll take a look at today. So these telemetry data can really give us clues about both an animal's behavior, and by behavior I mean direction and duration of travel, as well as their preferred habitat or their home range. You know, what type, environs do, what type of environments do these animals really prefer? So the goal of my demo today is to show you three ways that you can link the animal telemetry data with the EMU data to kind of explore this uh, physiochemical environments through which the animal's moving. So these are all of the animal tracks, and you can see that certainly there are some areas of the world that's sparse. We're quite rich in the Pacific Ocean, uh, it's a lot of points to look at. So I did just use the kernel density tool and get an idea of the density of the observations of tagged animals. I think we'll see, see these increase um, in future years, but for right now, it seems if you want to research uh, animal behaviors, the West Coast uh, seems to be the place. Well, to do this, rather than looking at that entire data set, I'm going to focus on a single animal. And today, I'm going to break the second rule of vaudeville. You're in vaudeville, you're never supposed to work with young people or animals. We've done that already uh, with those great presentations yesterday. So I'll break the second half of the rule and work with this elephant seal. Um, you couldn't ask for a cuter thing to give a demo about. So. <laughs> So this is the track of that northern elephant seal. If we look at this data, we can see that it looks like it was collected beginning in late 2011, uh, all the way through early of 2016. So this animal was tagged for quite a long period of time. So my goal here is to take these animal tracks and link them to the EMU data. How can I uh, link the EMU data to the animal track to get an idea of what type of physical environment, physiochemical environment, this animal is actually traveling through? I'll show you three ways to do that. Let's begin with the simplest way. So for each one of these points, I want to link it to the EMU data. I've got a subset of just the surface EMU data here that I'll be working with. These very, very many black points here. I'm only working with surface data today because these tags are pop-up tags. So they only transmit data um, once the animal pops out of the water um, and communicates with the satellite. So I want to actually select those EMU points that fall within a specific geodesic distance of my northern elephant seal points. So which EMU points are close to those telemetry points? And those are the ones that I'll summarize. I'm gonna, I picked a distance of about five kilometers. We know that these locations are not exactly accurate. Um, because of the difficulties of tagging animals and communicating with the satellites. Uh, maybe a little bit difficult to see in the back, but you can see now that I have a selection of points. 
These are the EMU points which fall close to the locations where this animal popped up out of the water. Let's summarize that EMU data now. So I have my, the subset of my West Coast EMUs, but I'm only working on the blue dots, the ones that I've selected, the ones that are closest to the telemetry points. I'm going to create an output table. We're going to look at this by EMU. And I'm going to ask for a summary of the names of the EMUs that this animal traveled through. Let's take a look at that table. And you can see that that animal, over the course of its tagging, actually traveled through four different EMUs. But it seems as if this EMU certainly has the, um, the highest number of observations in it. We can't necessarily say duration because we don't, uh, we, at this point, I've not taken into account of when each of these observations were made. But it seems, as an initial preference, this animal prefers shallow, very cold, normal saline, moderate to low nutrient waters. Now, one problem with this method is you'll see there are lots of points in between here where I've not selected any EMU data. At this point, I'm only considering point by point locations. Well, we know that at some point, this animal traveled from this location to this location. Um, we don't necessarily know how deep it dove or if it maybe took a roundabout path to get there. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm simply going to assume that the animal moved from one point to the next point in time. So what I want to do is take those points and convert them to lines. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my northern elephant seal points. I'm going to output a line. It's simply going to take those in time order. And now I actually have a line representing the track of that animal. This line in and of itself can provide us some clues on the behavior of the animal. There was clearly something interesting to this animal over here and some things that are interesting out here. So, you know, we, might, we can glean some information <clears throat> just by looking at this as a line. So the next thing that I'll do is actually buffer that line. My line, I'm going to buffer out to five kilometers. I'm going to do a geodesic buffer, since we're working with a fairly large distance here. And I'm going to dissolve all of the individual buffers. I just want to get one polygon, which represents the potential home range of this animal. You can see now that this actually represents a, a polygon. If I turn <clears throat> the EMUs back on, we can see that some of those EMUs will fall within those buffered points. So I'm going to go ahead and select those EMUs <clears throat> that fall within that buffered point. Again, our EMUs, I want the EMUs which intersect that buffer. I've created the new selection. I could go back through the same process of creating summary statistics and looking at each of these, kind of summarizing the physiochemical environment. But I'm going to use some of those nice techniques that I learned from Flora just a couple minutes ago and go back and look at these EMUs through charts. I'll create a histogram. Let's take a look at temperature initially. So what we're seeing here is the entire range of temperature from all of those black points that we're seeing. All of the EMUs are displayed on the chart. But what we're seeing highlighted in blue are the EMUs that this elephant seal actually traveled through. Um, just at first glance of this chart, I think it's safe to say I'm not seeing any kind of ecological niche. 
I'm not seeing any preference uh, that this animal might have for any specific habitat because the animal seems to be traveling through almost the full range of temperature values. I can easily change through to salinity. Uh, seems to be the case, certainly, there's probably not very many high salinity areas out there where that elephant seal is traveling. Okay. So that's the second method of looking at this, actually buffering out the track of the animal, taking into account the uncertainty of the GPS locations in summarizing. Let's look at one more way to do this. And this is a statistical approach for doing it. What I'm going to do is actually try to summarize statistically this distribution of animal, animal tracks, the, these, these pop-up points that we're seeing. We know that there's a lot of uncertainty in this, um, and the animal seems to be you know, taking some side trips as we go through here. So if I really want to get just at the core of these points, um, then I can run a tool called di directional distribution. And what this is doing is creating a standard deviational ellipse. It's going to encompass these points with an ellipse that contains about 68% of the points. What I want to do is get at the core of the locations uh, where we've tracked this animal. I'll go ahead and do a one standard deviational ellipse. That should give me approximately 68% of the points. Let this tool run, and you can see that this ellipse tells us a few things. First of all, it tells us the directional distribution, that this animal seems, you know, most of these points uh, represent this east-west kind of distribution. The animal is not primarily traveling north or south. Okay. I'll do my same workflow where I select only those points that fall within the ellipse. Okay, and then let's go ahead and look at the distribution of, those, of that data. Quickly create another histogram. Okay, and it tells us pretty much the same story, that this animal is traversing really uh, the full range of temperature values. But depending on the animal and um, how frequently it was tracked, you might try one of these different approaches. Okay, so let's just quickly look at these three methods uh, that we've talked about. And I tried to summarize this quickly in a slide. Um, the method that you would use would depend on what your goal is. Or do you want to emphasize the animal's behavior, or do you want to actually just try to capture the home range of that animal? We've looked at um, the buffering technique. The near technique I didn't show you, but it's very similar to the select by location. Okay. I showed you the standard deviational ellipse tool, where we're looking at a statistical subset of those tracked points. Um, I didn't have time to show some other methods. If you wanted to, we have a tool called Minimum Bounding Geometry. That tool will draw a convex hull around those points. You could summarize within that and get an, another way to assess the animal's home range. And <clears throat> the points that I had available to me were only 2D points. Um, there are 3D animal tracks available. If you did that, I've suggested some tools you might use to explore this same work workflow in a 3D environment. So we've looked a bit at the biology. Um, we've looked at physiochemical stuffs. We've, we've uh, looked over at some of the animals that are there. But I think that we've actually spent enough time on the ocean surface. So we've talked that the ocean is really a big place. And we know that many of you sitting out there are interested in the ocean floor um, <clears throat> and what happens on the ocean floor. So we're going to dive deep right now. And Vinay from the raster team 
is going to share some techniques with us for doing object-based image analysis in ArcGIS Pro.